If you have your Bibles, I would like you to turn to Joshua chapter 1. I'll give you the text in just a minute. Joshua chapter 1. Praise God. I'm going to go right to my message today and I'm going to share a couple things that the Lord has done this week and uh, showing, confirming scripture to us. When you're in need, when there's nobody else to run to, run to the word of God. If you can't get a hold of the best prayer warrior, get a hold of God anyway through his word. If you've got the word laying at home and you might be 20 miles from the house, stop and just say Jesus. And he's as close as the mention of his name. That's the connection through Jesus Christ. You don't always have to memorize every scripture. You don't always have to know every verse. You may not remember the favorite verse or chorus, the words to the best song. You'll remember something. You'll be beginning to uh, think and think, well, I thought I had that memorized. I thought I had that rhythm, you know. God, God is honored when you just look up, when you can't do anything but just do something different than you did before. Get your eyes upon him. And I know that that, that even is kind of a wrong description because, you know, we say look up because we know heaven is up there. But if you can't even look to heaven, God is everywhere. If all you can do is get one eye open, you know what I'm saying. If all you can do is get one little finger up, do something that you haven't done in a long time. Praise and magnify and believe his holy word. God has showed himself very strong and very real. Many years ago when the Lord called me to preach, I was called into ministry, I believe at the age of eight. I remember God dealing with my heart at age eight. And it took all the way from age 8 to age 15 to preach my first revival. And I taught a lot of Sunday school classes. I went and preached at the rest homes. I went and stood on street corners. I went to different hospitals where people were. And when the church and the pastor said I can preach and get my license again. I was 15 years old when I got my exhorters in the church of God. And that was a long time ago. But the Lord gave me a verse of scripture. The Lord said, be strong and courageous. That's what he said way back then. And he has many, many times confirmed that scripture in Joshua chapter 1 to me. And this week, as I continue the story of what the Lord has helped me to do over the last several weeks, I told the Lord if he would provide a place for me to live that I would do my very best at maintaining every square inch of that place. And I would use it for his glory, use it for his purpose, and for a long time, I've had a garage, but I've had that garage just piled up high. We've had, Kim and I have been married 37 years, and we've got Brandon, Brittany, Breck, and Josh, and then we've had in-laws and outlaws and good laws and bad laws, and everybody's had somebody move in, and this past summer, we even took some stuff down to Kim's mom down in Lexington. We took a, a load all the way down there for her. And it seemed like our house was nothing more than just containers and boxes. And everybody's been there. And you save stuff. And you're, you're trying to get it to the right hands at the right time when they want something. When they need it, they'll, they'll call and say, Dad, I know, I know that that's that. Brandon's been very good at taking his stuff, and uh, Brittany's got her stuff, and now Breck's got his stuff, and um, so Kim and I were left with a lot of stuff, but we have probably given away more than what we even, you know, keep. 
I remember before we made the move back from Virginia to Ohio, we gave away seven different vehicles over a period of time, moving up to the transition of that move. Literally just saying, here, here's the title and here's the keys, take this and I don't know where we come up with so much stuff. God has always provided. And I was showing some people that were here before we began the service. I showed them how they helped me to get to where I was and how we had that garage running over of containers and now how it's a garage that I was able to pull my car and my motorcycle in and close the garage door. And hallelujah. And so we painted the whole house. We painted the garage. The garage on the corners are 20 feet on each corner and 26 feet up to the end. Eaves, very tall. And the thing that the Lord did, I began to work and the Lord said, I'll provide. I said, Lord, I'm going to need some strength. The Lord said, I'm going to provide. Last week I told you about, about the fourth day of me painting the house. And I say four days because with it raining, it probably rained two or three of them. So I started on the first day and got on the, like the fourth or fifth day. But on about the fourth day of the project, I was painting the house. And I heard a truck beep out front. And I looked down off that ladder and it was my cousin Jimmy. And he'd come running up to the ladder and he said, Mark, what do you need me to do? I'm here to help you. And I went, thanks be to God. And Jimmy's mom and dad, they used to own some big farms and they've had a lot of black Angus cattle and a lot of pigs. You know, when I tell the pig story of being in the pig pen and mom and dad, you know, what would we do? We'd always stop by the pond or we'd stop by the creek or one place they had, you know, like a building swimming pool. We, we'd, we, would, we would walk out of there like we just came out of a, a, a hot shower. But I didn't realize it when I was a little kid that you can be in a pig pen and you can spit shine yourself. Come on. And the smell of pig stays with you for a month. And we'd walk up and mom would go, you've been in the pig pen. I'd go, this is not a spiritual story, mom. Why are you... Why are you getting on me for, you know, getting in the pig pen? Sure, I love to ride pigs. I love to jump out of the barn, you know, 28 foot high or whatever. I, I, I remember swinging off of stuff and landing where, you know, feet and legs don't supposed to land. And every time I'd go to the pig pen, I'd clean up. And I don't care if, if, if Joy and Vernon and, and their kids needed help out there at the farm. If I took a hot shower Friday night, and if Joy run me home back to Fairfield on Saturday morning, and I mean, I look like I'm ready for church, I'd walk in the door and mom goes, you've been to the pig pen again, haven't you? Because that pig smell stayed a month, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. But when we got the house painted, Jimmy came back and he said, when are we going to clean on the inside of that garage? I said, well, come back tomorrow and we'll start on that. So it took us about six days doing that garage. Lord have mercy. Then it started raining and lightning and thundering and storming. And while it was doing that, we'd just go on inside and just work on the inside. And he crawled up in that, that garage and it's got a nice loft inside of it, a big area. And I think the upstairs is probably bigger than the downstairs garage. And he got up there and what I started on one end, he got up there and he said, Mark, he said, get those bins ready. He said, I'm going to fill this whole rafter with everything that's in this garage. There was a couple of them that we got rid of, but we didn't have to just break everything down. But to make a long story short, he got up there and he closed the barn door on one end. And he started stacking it like a hay barn. And he got it restacked. And we had more room than I've ever seen in my life. And we were able this week to get everything out of that garage up to the upstairs. 
and he's got that all nice like a hay barn up there for me. And he's still got like a third of it left. It's like, it was Jesus and Jimmy up there working at the hay barn for me. And we pulled the post wagon in and pulled the motorcycle in and shut the garage door and shouted, Hallelujah. But I remember halfway through that project, Jimmy went to get some lunch, and he called me. He said, I'm going to be there at 1 o'clock. And I said, okay, I'll be out in the garage. And I had the garage door open, and I'm in there moving bins around, trying to get everything ready on this level. And he said, I've got something. He said on the phone, he said, I'll be there at 1 o'clock. i got something for you. And so when, when he ran up out of his truck, he handed me this little Bible marker and this pen, and it says, be strong. And courageous, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1, 9. I tell you what, I did not think I had the strength to even lift one box that day. We worked into the night, and the next morning, we got there, we started about 8.30 the next morning. And I didn't tell him. But when he got up that ladder and I was lifting those bins, I the, literally, I, I felt that I didn't get the first one halfway up like this. And he's reaching down on that ladder. So he's got all the pull and I'm just going to push. When I did that first box, I thought I would just roll over and die. I literally, I had zero strength. And it's 8.30 that morning. And I'm thinking, my God. And I didn't tell him. He probably heard me grunt. How many has ever started a project more tired than when you, you know, finished the night before? You understand what I'm saying? Everybody's been there. And I tell you what, it, it was really, really tough. I didn't say nothing, but I just kept thinking, be strong and courageous. The Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Amen. J Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. And the thing is, the Lord kept confirming his word to me through that Bible marker and that pen that Jimmy gave me. And so I got the second one, I got the third one. And I thought it was not going to take us too long the second day. And I'm talking about this is the intense day of moving it all, you know. So now we're like six days into it. But I'm talking about after all the rain. And after, you know, I thought we'd get done the night before real late. We worked real late. But at 8.30 that next morning, when I lifted that first one, I felt everything go out my toes. I did not have any strength, and I, I was like, oh, God, now I was grunting, and I was pushing, and I was doing everything. And, and, and I said, Jimmy, I don't know how in the world God's given you strength. He was, he was herky and jerky. You would have thought he was Mike Tyson or somebody. Literally the strength, that I mean, I, I know God had to give him strength, supernatural strength. And all of you been there when, when you literally, you felt like you could not go another bin, another mile. You couldn't go through another battle. And I'm looking at all this stuff and I'm thinking there's as much stuff here as there was yesterday. And the thing is, God just gave me some boldness and some strength and I, I stayed with it. And it has nothing to do with me. It has all to do with Jesus and Jimmy. Amen. God used my cousin to bless me. And uh, every time that I would go in for a restroom break or a water break or whatever, I would look at that, be strong and courageous. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That was over there in my kitchen. And I'd walk past the kitchen and I'd go into the bathroom and I'd just be thankful that the Lord was my strength. And there was no way humanly possible if I had to do that by myself, I could not do it. I would have broke myself down. But the thing is, God sent the right person at the right time and God gave us a miracle. And so I began to break this down. Be strong and courageous. That means do not be afraid. Or do not be discouraged. Amen? When you begin to look at God's word, you begin to look at Joshua chapter 1. In verse 1, Moses is dead. The report comes to Joshua. And it says, The Lord spoke to Joshua, who had served Moses. And verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. 
Now you and all the people prepare to cross over to Jordan. So God gives him a message of how far he is going to go. And then where his territory is going to be. Verse 4 is his territory. Verse 5, this is awesome. Joshua 1, 5. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, God will not leave us or forsake us. And then verse 6 says, be strong and courageous. Hallelujah. For you will distribute the land I swore to their fathers to give them as an inheritance. And so as we begin to get in Joshua chapter 1, the Lord is telling us to have strength in him only. Praise God. We don't trust in horses or chariots or men in army. Thank God for all the security that they bring. But God is our hope. God is our ever-present help in the time of trouble. Amen. Be strong and courageous for you will distribute the land. So here Joshua is receiving his orders and his command from Almighty God. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Praise God forevermore. And then, this is very awesome, verse 7. Above all, be strong and very courageous to carefully observe all the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn to the right hand. Do not turn to the left hand so that you will have success wherever you go. Listen, as you remain connected, what does God promise? Success wherever we go. Praise God. Success wherever we go. How do I get success in everything I do? I've got to stay connected to God's word. I don't lean on what's on the right. I don't lean upon or rely on the left, but I rely and lean upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 9, haven't I commanded you, here it is again, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Why? For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Praise God. So many times in this verse, God commands us not to be afraid, not to be discouraged, not to be uh, weary in our mind, mentally, or even in our soul, or our heart, or our spirit. God says he will make a way. Be strong and courageous. Hallelujah. Go in. I'll be with you. Go out. I'll be with you. Go forth. I'll be with you. Go up. Go down. Go in and out. I'll be with you. And as long as you stay connected, you will remain successful all the way through. Hallelujah. Strength, supernatural strength. You know, there are times that you have to realize, you know, farmers use big equipment. If a person had a thousand acres, you don't plant a thousand acres of corn by yourself. You need a John Deere tractor. Come on. If you have a bunch of horses, there are times you have to get in a big old pickup truck. And you just don't pull down some bales of hay and carry them for a mile down the road. You, you have to use the equipment that God puts in your hand. Joshua was weaponless. He was a warrior. But now he had to become a general to replace Moses. And he needed more than just mental ingenuity. He needed more than just mental knowledge of the situation. There was people that were threatening him and threatening Israel all the way through. That's why he had to depend upon God's word. And God said, be strong and courageous, for I will go with you. And as you remain in my word, and as you remain connected, you will have an outcome of success. We need to be successful, church. We need to be successful. We need to have favor with God and man. 
And we've got to have God's plan and we've got to have God's touch and we've got to have God's renewing power. Be strong and courageous. The word strength, that's more than just bobcat power. That's more than John Deere power. Come on. That's more than Ford tractor power. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Strength in the Lord is the confident assurance that comes from knowing that whatever I face, my Savior walks beside me guiding me, guiding me, supporting me, and providing everything I need. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like shouting, glory to God. That's strength. And courage is the bold hope. Hallelujah. Some of us, you've had to fight Battles and you've had fear hit you on every side and you've been discouraged and you've been depressed and you've been hit mentally and physically and emotionally and financially. It seems like you've been stopped by Satan. But in the midst of all of that, you have to choose courage. And that's more than just something to talk about. Courage, biblical courage is the bold hope that makes it possible to take on any challenge, glory to God, face any foe, trusting I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Hallelujah. So be strong and courageous. God said Moses is dead. Joshua You've only come this far with Moses and it's only half of the way. The journey's only half over. Listen to me, church. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next Friday. Don't worry about next month. Don't worry about Christmas time. God, who has brought us this far by giving us boldness and strength and holy courage, hallelujah, he will sustain us tomorrow and always, hallelujah. Let's give God praise in the house. I'm sure Joshua wanted to quit. Just like me the other day at 8.30 when I lifted that first box. Oh, Lord have mercy. I wanted to quit. But I couldn't. Because the goal wasn't quit. Jimmy said, what do you want to get back in this garage? Mark, he knew. He talked to me plenty. I said, I want to get a garage. I, God's provided it, so I want my car in it. I want a motorcycle at the same time. So some of you are going to have to be outside in the yard, or something's going to have to be at the curb in the garbage, or something's going to have to be up in the hayloft. Come on. And I, and I don't really care what it's going to take, but we're going to get the goal is we're going to get that, that car in and the motorcycle in and the garage door down. Hallelujah. That was the goal. And I'm sure, I'm sure he's probably up there. I didn't ask him. But I knew if I was feeling like I, I need an extra water break and I need an extra bathroom break, I'm sure he needed one, but I, I didn't let him come down off that ladder. <laughs> That's the thing. If Jimmy comes over there, you just toss him up some. Uh, he loves Mountain Dew. Give, give him an ice cold Mountain Dew and keep him up in the loft. And then lock the door. Oh, I tell you, there's been times I wanted to quit. I'm sure he felt like quitting too. But we were on a project and, and think, what if we had waited until it got cold and icy and rainy and snowy and then it had been way too cold? He'd still want a cold pop. He don't like hot chocolate. He don't, you know, he don't like coffee and he don't like tea like the, us, you know, us nice people in the church, you know, like a nice little cup of tea. He's not only one of them little tea drinkers. Are you hear what I'm talking about? He likes his Mountain Dew. Come on. But <laughs> oh my goodness. That day after Jimmy left, after I pulled the car in and I got the motorcycle in and I had him stay over there. We, I shut the door and I let him pull the motorcycle in for me. And he reached over and locked that door. And we talked a little bit and he went home. I went immediately in. I mean, I, I, I was dripping. I was soaking. I bet I lost 20 pounds. Does it look like I lost 20 pounds? I think it did. When I got in the shower, 
I started crying. And the Holy Ghost hit me. And God whispered in my ear, this is what God said. I could, I could feel him like elbow me, like nudge me in the shower. And he whispered in my ear. And he goes, this is God saying, we did good, didn't we? We did good, didn't we? And I went, yeah. He said, did you like who I sent? Yeah. Did you like your help? Yeah. We did good, didn't we? Yeah. See, that goes back to our 120 days from April all the way to 15th of August. You matter, God. Life-altering events. I, I would have dropped dead of a heart attack. I couldn't have done all that. But thank God, God had my cousin Jimmy at the right place at the right time. And God was all in everything. And God, I mean, I could hear, you know, sometimes we, we testify. And we, we always hear the hounds of hell. And we, we always know how there's dark clouds around us and how the enemy's always fighting us. Well, this isn't to glorify the devil today at all. This is to glorify God. We did good, didn't we? We did good, didn't we? Hallelujah. We did good, didn't we? Hallelujah. Oh, God, I'm so thankful that you gave us strength. I'm glad you woke me up this morning. And I'm glad that we started early and we didn't wait late that day. Hallelujah. Why? Because God wanted to enjoy the success and victory of it just as much as we did. I want everybody to stand. I want you to nudge somebody and say, we did good, didn't we? Do it again. Tell them again. Tell them again. Come on. Tell somebody else, we did good, didn't we? Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. I'm about to shout. Hallelujah. There is no one like our God. 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 God has given us strength and courage, the confident assurance that comes from knowing that whatever we face, our Savior walks beside us, guiding us, supporting us, Proving everything along the way is met. Everything is provided. Every way is made. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name, I pray. And I stand in the gap for our congregation and I pray from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around. I pray right now a release of God's power and spirit. I pray that every enemy, dark spirit of hell that's attacking people, I pray they'll be stopped in their tracks now. And I pray that Satan will not be glorified, but God will get all the glory and all the power and all the praise and all the adoration. All the glory goes to God. All the honor goes to God. We trust our God. We put our faith in God. Our hope is in the Lord. Our strength is in the Lord. Our peace is in the Lord. Our favor is in the Lord. We have our bread provided by God. The gas in our cars is by God. Our family strength and peace and unity is in the spirit of life. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No one like our God. No one like our God. No one like our God. Thank you, Lord, for even visiting me and elbowing me in my shower. 
we did good, didn't we? God mattered. God got involved in my situation. God got in Jimmy's situation. God's got in all of our situation. Because we matter to God and God matters to us. Hallelujah. We matter to each other. We matter to our family. No matter what lie comes out of hell. We matter. We're important. Because Jesus lives big in our heart. Nothing we've done. Nothing we've attained. Nothing we've been able to buy. I don't care if I've had $10 million in my hand. I can't buy the love of God. I don't, I don't care if I'm a trillionaire. I don't have enough money. But he said, if you don't have money, come anyway. If you don't have wisdom or knowledge, come anyway. Because God is our ever-present help in the time of trouble. We will not fear. Hallelujah. Our faith is in the Lord. Our trust is in the Lord. We depend 100% upon God right now. More than anything. Hallelujah. Strength. Courage. Boldness. Hug somebody again and say, We did good, didn't we?